Hey guys, we're talking with Chef Andrew Whitney of Virago today. He just came back from the Kansas Beef Tour, so we're going to find out what he learned on his trip. So prior to going, I didn't have a whole lot of this on-hand experience, or I didn't, I didn't grow up on a farm. I wasn't really exposed to farming life um, or ranch life for that matter. So I kind of had the preconceived notion of more of what the mainstream media kind of put out there about the cattle industry and um, kind of the processing plants and the cow calf operations. I didn't really have a whole lot of information about. So going, seeing, meeting, and talking to these people firsthand was really eye-opening for me in the sense that it's not a commercial operation in the sense of it's just a dollar sign attached to a product. It's people who care about these animals and, and care about the well-being of these animals, but at the same time understand that they're food and it's for a purpose. So it was really awesome to kind of see the full circle picture on the tour. It's probably the amount of families that, that operate it and how it's not a giant corporation uh, it's just kind of driving by a field going, this needs to be done, this needs to be done, this needs to be done. Every operation that we went to over the two days that we were there were ran by families and then had other ranchers from neighboring farms that helped them on the days that they needed to get stuff done. So there was never just random labor there helping to fulfill a, a deadline or a product. It was families who live and breathe and work in the cattle industry helping other families who do the same. So at the feed yard, it was really cool. I, I didn't have the highest of hopes going into it in terms of what I had mentally pictured, um, where it was, in my head, it was like this weird factory farming, kind of like every cow only a foot apart, crammed together uh, with just minimal food, minimal access to water. But what I saw uh, and what seemed to be the, the, the practice there was huge open pens, very few cattle per pen, um, lots of space for them to eat, run around, um, multiple water tanks in each uh, pen and the guys who, who managed and worked a lot, so not only they care for the animals, but every animal that there was an issue with, if there wasn't issues with, was immediately identified, isolated, and then taken care of as if it were their own cow, which I thought was very admirable and respectable. Um, the last stop that we took, we actually spoke with the guy, uh, Dr. Dan, I believe, about practices and nutrients and, and a global impact from the beef industry and the understanding of the difference on a nutrient level from organic beef to uh, standard beef was so minuscule and, and almost inexistent um, that I feel that the, the amount that they push out to consumers to buy organic or buy grass fed or, or, or source locally, uh, it, it's almost misleading to the point that you're overlooking not only quality farmers, but family operations that not only look for that process and in, in, in that business, but uh, that, that base their entire livelihood off of it and treat these animals with the same amount of respect that anybody else does just because the, the label's different doesn't mean that the product at the end is different. Absolutely, I've always had a respect for the product that we put on the menu. But being there firsthand, talking to the farmer, seeing the entire process from start to finish gives you not only a better understanding, but a deeper respect for the product. And that helps me to teach and educate my staff to have the same amount of respect for the product, which in the end for me uh, is about eliminating waste and eliminating the misuse of product and, and keeping uh, not only the best product on our shelves, but keeping the education going to where no matter who is at the end result with that product, they have an understanding and a respect for it just as much as everybody through the entire process. Absolutely. So Viraga started in 2001 in Midtown. Um, and in 2011, we moved here to the Gulch. Uh, we're a Robata Grill and Sushi Bar. Um, the Robata Grill is kind of like our focal point for the hot side of the menu, um, featuring different cuts of uh, pork, beef, a lot of beef on the menu here. Um, and then sushi um, is a big portion of our, our menu as well. Um, as far as what we do here that's a little bit different or a little bit more unique than any of the other restaurants is uh, we put a lot of focus on not only where we source our product but how we source it and how we treat it in-house um, and a lot of people get the misconception that because we are such a large restaurant that we don't take care of the product that we have or that we don't 
do everything on an in-house basis, but everything that comes in our door, we fabricate, we make, and we use in-house. And I think that at the end of the day, they find the quality on the plate, and they understand that everybody that works for us has the same amount of respect for the product as, as we should.